Hawaiian Islands are an important part of the United States, although they are located a great distance from our Pacific shore. In this story, we will see how these islands were formed long before people were on Earth, and what the islands are like today. These islands are a little over 2,000 miles from the west coast of the United States and 3,400 miles from Japan. The Hawaiian group takes in eight main islands as well as the smaller ones which extend west as far as Midway Island. The island named Hawaii is the largest. From Hawaii across to Maui is 27 miles. Nearby are Kaho'olawe and Lanai. Molokai is here. From Molokai to Oahu is 22 miles. Honolulu, the largest in this island. Up here, 60 miles from Oahu is Kauai. And close by is small Ni'ihau. Altogether, they have a land area as large as Delaware, Connecticut, and Rhode Island combined, and have 971 miles of coastline. These islands were formed by volcanic action, which happened many ages ago. Parts of the old volcanoes can be seen today, but they look much different than when first created. The volcanic action started when the floor of the Pacific Ocean cracked open and lava came up out of the cracks. The lava built up until the volcanoes rose out of the sea. In some places, they built up nearly three miles high above the water. When the volcanic action stopped, bare mountains remained. Now, the highest point on any of the islands is Mauna Kea. On the island of Hawaii, 13,825 feet high. A good example of the island formation is an old volcano close to the city of Honolulu on the island of Oahu. Another example is the volcano on the island of Maui. This volcano is nearly two miles high. The top of this volcano contains a crater which was formed after the lava stopped flowing upward. It is 21 miles around the rim of this crater. Down in the crater, there are huge cones of red cinders remaining from the last volcanic action 200 years ago. Most of Hawaii's volcanoes are no longer active. But on the island of Hawaii, there have been numerous eruptions during the last century. Recently, Mauna Loa volcano erupted suddenly. Molten lava poured down the sides of the volcano, crossing roads and farms, and finally flowed into the sea. This violent action lasted for a month. At many places along the shores of the islands, one can see where such flows have hardened at the water's edge. The black sands on some of the beaches were originally volcanic lava rock. This crater on the side of Mauna Loa shows signs of underground volcanic action. Even when not erupting, gas and vapor rise from the ground. Eruptions have occurred here in recent years. Several times, hot lava has boiled up from the bottom, filling this entire pit from the fiery geysers below. After many centuries of gradual change, these volcanic islands have been transformed from masses of barren lava, rock, and ashes into areas thickly covered with vegetation. The action of water, wind, and sun developed the land and shores into places of great natural beauty. The canyons of Oahu were formed by the washing of torrents of rain. At many places where water flows out to the ocean, bays have formed, 
and some of them now furnish natural harbors for ships. These islands are in the tropical zone about as far south as Mexico City. They have an all-year temperature of around 75 degrees. It would be much hotter except for the northwest winds, which blow most of the time. These winds, laden with moisture, strike the cool mountain slopes and produce frequent rains. The amount of rain varies greatly. For example, on Oahu in downtown Honolulu, the rainfall is light. But in the hills, only two or three miles back of the city, it rains four times as much. There's one place in the mountains where it rains 20 times the amount it does in Honolulu. As a result of Hawaii's climate, tropical varieties of trees, flowers, and food crops flourish wherever there's lots of rain. Hawaii has many trees unusual to the United States, like the African tulip tree, for example. The pandanus tree is useful because its leaves furnish the raw material to make articles like hats, table mats, and many other woven products. There are many fruit trees, like coconuts, guavas, papayas, and bananas. The flowering trees are the most beautiful of all, and they bloom in great abundance in many colors. The people of Hawaii call them shower trees. In this warm climate, flowers are nearly everywhere. There are many varieties of orchids. Some are grown outdoors at homes or at commercial nurseries. Many orchids also grow wild among the ferns out of the fields of lava rock. The hibiscus is the official flower of the islands. It blooms in different colors. The bird of paradise looks like a bird with brilliant plumage. The night-blooming cereus is a rare flower which opens only at night. Many flowers are strung into necklaces called lays. It is an island custom to present lays to one's friends at any kind of occasion. On the slopes and in the valleys, food crops are raised. In early times, the taro root, used in making poi, was one of the principal items of food. Poi is made by cooking, pounding, and kneading the roots into soft, pasty form. Taro is grown in small fields, which are flooded with water. Rice is grown in a similar manner. In this field, a watcher has to scare the birds away by pulling wires all day. The wires shake tin cans, which make a constant racket. Coffee grows on the island of Hawaii. Coffee beans are red when they are ripe. Then they are dried in the sun after gathering. Pineapples are a big crop, and most of the fruit and juice of this plant, which is used all over the world, comes from Hawaii. Sugar is the largest crop and the sugar cane fields are seen on the slopes and on much of the flatland of four of the islands. So we have seen how the Hawaiian islands were formed and how plant life has transformed these islands into an area of beauty and usefulness and provided a comfortable place for people to live today. <laughs> <laughs>